recording. Very good. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Okay, folks. Um, caveat here. I am not a video expert. I'm just going to share what I've learned over the last few years deploying cameras out on our Arden ham radio network. Uh, I wish Daryl was here. He knows video front and back, but we'll go for it here. First, you have to turn this on. Oh, I know what's wrong. Stand by. So they're not advancing. Why not? There we go. Um, I've given a lot, of, a lot of presentations on networking with Arden over the last few years, and I've used this photo the last few years. So you may have seen it um, if you attended one of my presentations. Uh, but I'll go through the backstory again for those who haven't seen it. Um, here in Ventura County, California, about 40 miles northwest of downtown Los Angeles, um, through 2016 and 2017, as Arden expanded the capabilities of the software, we were deploying uh, an Arden network in Ventura County. Uh, we're fortunate to have a lot of hills and mountains, so uh, Backbone spanned those with access points covering the valleys. At one of the sites, uh, Sulphur Mountain, which is in central Ventura County. We had a node and a couple of access points. And just for the heck of it, we threw a Junker fixed focus camera up there. It was fun to watch. In um, September of 2017, Ben, AI6YR, who's a tech specialist in this section, dropped me a note with a link to an article on how to stream web cameras to YouTube. He said, why don't you see if you can figure this out? We may need it eventually. Well, I took a look at the article and it's, it's moderately complex, but I got to figure it out. And I shared a, a, a YouTube, live YouTube of my driveway camera off of my home security system. We thought that was pretty cool. And I filed it away for further reference. Uh, that was uh, late September, 2017. And in 2018, December of 2018, like six weeks later, the uh, Thomas fire broke out. And at the time it was one of the largest fires in Southern California. Uh, ben pinged me because he keeps an eye on all of the um, service agencies, fire departments and the like. Um, within 15 minutes, he pinged me and said, "Hey." I got a fire going up near uh, Santa Paula. Can you th think you can stream that camera? Well, it was on a different site with a different OS, different camera model, um, but I did get it working. And this is what we saw. Um, and we managed to stream it to YouTube and I streamed it for, I don't know, about two hours as the fire got closer and closer. We finally lost the, the the network when an intermediate site, intermediate uh, Arden site went down due to uh, power failure. The winds were howling that day. We were taking 90 mile an hour gusts and you can't control brush fires under those conditions. In any case, that fire you can see that's about topping the ridge, between the time it broke out six miles away and here was a half an hour and that's only about a mile and a half away. The fire proceeded down, you can see the the driveway light there in the center of the camera uh, of the uh, private property this happens to be on. And it uh, came across there, went right to left across your screen, screen and passed within about 100 yards of this tower. It proceeded west and uh, ravaged a better part of Ventura. Um, uh, quite a few people were watching this until we lost it. Uh, and. Um, was very educational. The lessons we learned from this, um, more cameras, they need to be pan, tilt, zoom. Sites need to be battery backed up because brush fires are endemic to Southern California. And a lot of ham radio sites do not have any commercial or uh, governmental presence. So a camera on those sites could have a unique view of something like this. So, um, over the next year or so, we worked, as we had resources, we worked at uh, hardening the sites, uh, 
adding more cameras and the such. So that was uh, the end of 2017. So why is this not working? Hmm. Anyway, I'll have to do this. Uh, November of 2018, we had this fire break out. The Woolsey fire broke out in Woolsey Canyon between um, LA County and Ventura County. And again, Santa Ana wind conditions, howling winds. Uh, you're looking about Southwest. It proceeded left to right across your screen, screen and just a little farther to the west there. Um, and where you're looking at is the very southwest corner of my town. The fire came down that hill, but the fire department was ready for it and they fended it off before it did any damage. The fire turned south at that point, went through Thousand Oaks, California and down to Malibu and burned quite a few homes. Um, so we had learned the value of it um, and by this time, Ben was prepared. He has a, a large Twitter following, people who are following him for uh, emergency notifications. And he had streamed this, he had posted this URL for this video stream out to his Twitter feed. And quite a few people watched it for many, many hours. I think I streamed this for 36 hours. Uh, by the way, um, June of 2018, uh, every every June is Ham Radio Month in our county, and I suspect most counties. And in their proclamation, they specifically mentioned uh, how valuable this was, and that the fire department found the video valuable because it was the first uh, extant video they had after the fire broke out. So, and um, more locally, <laughs> this happened to be. Uh, uh, directly beneath the, one of the hills, and we streamed this little fire. And uh, but you can see that the value of video, uh, of live video, and streaming it to YouTube. I'll talk more about that later. Um, streaming video uses bandwidth, and it's pretty useless to stream uh, a camera that doesn't show anything changing. Um, a more useful purpose when nothing's happening is to take a screenshot. This happens to be um, camera on the east end of Ojai Valley looking west. Uh, it's, a, it's a site that suffered fire damage in uh, yet another fire since been repaired. So what do you do with that screenshot? screenshot? Um, you put it on a web page. This is a web page. We put a Raspberry Pi at all of our sites. Um, it's hand, handy for uh, posting uh, screenshots of the cameras. But additionally, uh, you can uh, use it to post telemetry down there. You can see the battery stack voltage inside and outside temperature and the fact that the uh, AC power is good. And you can go crazy with telemetry um, uh, intruder alerts from opening doors, you know, the sky's the limit. But uh, Raspberry Pi is a pretty useful tool on our networks. So resolutions, you know, 1080p, 1920 by 1080, that's pretty much your HD TV standard, although we are going to 4K now. Uh, 720p is 1280. And by the way, that's 1280 pixels across and 720 pixels down, horizontal by vertical. Um, HD TV used to do that, not many people do anymore. And if you're talking about computers, it's called WXGA-H. And they're both supported by two megapixel cameras, which is uh, kind of important. I'll mention that, I'll talk about that later. Frame rates, how frequently do you up, up, update the image on the screen? Computer monitors go to 60 frames per second. If you're a gamer, you may have something that goes faster than that, but that's fairly standard. Uh, HTTV will do 24, 30, or 60 frames per second. Um, the faster it goes, uh, the less flicker you get between uh, frames. More, the motion is smoother. So video compression standards. AVC is advanced video coding, and I never knew it was called that. I always called it H.264. 
Apparently it's also called MPEG-4 part 10 or MPEG-4 AVC. We're also, and um, there was an older MPEG-2 and AVC or H.264 being more advanced and complex um, can send the same video at half the transmitted bit rate of old, the older MPEG-2. And if you want to know more about AVC or H.264, um, skim the Wikipedia article. Even the first three or four paragraphs are really helpful to help you understand what it's doing and why it can do that compression. And then you have high efficiency video coding. I never knew it was called that. I always called it H.265, otherwise known as MPEG H part two. This gets better data compression than, than uh, H.264. Um, the way they do their data compression is they only change, one of the ways they do it is they only transmit uh, pixels that have changed. Well, in H.265, they send smaller chunks of the screen than H.264. The granularity of what they transmit is higher. So they're able, able to get better data compression. Alternatively, um, you can maintain the same bit rate and get better video. This all pretty much happens behind the screen, behind the scenes. And again, Wikipedia is a great article or just Google H.264 standard or H.265. So some considerations. Um, when you're looking at a web page, you want to make sure you get all of the text, the pictures intact. So if your network drops one or more frames, HTTP and TCP will retransmit them till it gets the entire uh, web page intact. Well, if you're streaming voice and data, there's no time to go back and retransmit. Um, so TCP does not work very well for video. And we'll talk about how they get around that. Um, browsers, even worse, don't natively support streaming protocols like RTSP. Um, you can configure a browser, for instance, Firefox, to launch VLC. Um, that's a good workaround. Um, and it's documented. Just search for um, launch VLC with Firefox or Chrome or something like that. I did find several browser plugins for RTSP and I'll talk about RTSP in a moment, um, but I couldn't get any of them to work. If you can, more power to you. What is, um, been around for a few years, but now actively um, becoming supported is ONVIF, Open Network Video Interface Forum. And it's a hugely complex, Encomp uh, encompassing a lot of different standards for uh, connecting IP-based security products. Um, it's standardized all of the different facets of those various devices. This is what the spec covers. I won't read them all. Um, various ONVIF implementations cover all or part of this, um, not all of the implementations uh, cover all of those bullet points there, but it's getting better. Um, the cameras we started rolling out um, two and three years ago knew nothing about ONVIF. Now most new ones do, which doesn't take all the pain out of deploying a video camera, but it helps a lot. Additionally, more and more the applications are now supporting ONVIF management of cameras. And again, it simplifies things. Um, ONVIF uses an IP port, but it's not standardized. You'd think they could have. Um, some use port 80, some use 443. Uh, I know Sunba, cam Sunba cameras use port 8899. And I saw another brand that was like 77, 73. So pay attention to that. Um, ONVIF manages a lot of protocols and RTSP and RTAP, which we care about, are also managed by ONVIF. RTSP 
real-time streaming protocol just manages the streaming media server. It tells it when to start, when to stop, etc. That media server is actually RTP, real-time transport protocol. We don't concern ourselves with it because our TSP talks to it. And it's designed for end-to-end -end real time transfer of streaming media. And by the way, um, it uses UDP, which means, which is universal datagram protocol. UDP streams packets towards the destination. It could care less if they are, get there intact or not, you know, and uh, doesn't expect an acknowledgement coming back. Something I learned, if you're making a VoIP phone call or using a, a VoIP chat or something, um, it uses RTP as the transmission uh, protocol. Uh, SIP, if you're making a, a VoIP phone call, SIP is session initiation protocol. It's used to set up and tear down phone calls. So ONVIF tells RTSP what to do, which tells RTP what to do layer upon layer upon layer. So um, we have limited bandwidth on our networks. You have to manage it carefully and you can uh, bring a, a network to its knees with an improperly configured camera. Um, the actual occupied bandwidth of a video stream varies depending on the amount of motion in each frame. Um, if you're looking at a a door that's not opening, there's like nothing being transmitted. Additionally, the resolution of the frame, the video stream will impact how much it has to transmit and also the frame rate. So some examples, your plain vanilla HD 1080p, 1920 by 1080 by 30 frames per second with H.264 at high quality about 7.6 megabits per second. And I can verify that because when we, uh, we did some testing a couple years ago and our end-to-end -end back with bandwidth across the county is right around seven megabits per second. And we tied, tied, whew, tried streaming an HD channel across there and we ended up getting about 80% of the signal. Um, it's not on this, but we went down to a standard definition plain old vanilla TV, and that worked fine. By the way, I don't have to mention that retransmitting broadcast video is illegal. This was for a test. So a 720p video image, 1280 by 720, brought down to 15 frames per second. You get 0.7 megabits per second, which is potentially very manageable on our network. And if you go down to 640 by 480 by 10 frames per second, which is 0.3 megapixels, you get 0.1 megabits per second. Piece of cake. Should be if, you're, uh, uh, if your network is uh, at least halfway up to snuff. So I'll talk a little bit about this. Um, this is a screenshot, screenshot of a uh, team talk net we had a number of months ago. Um, I recommend Team Talk. It's very versatile. You can do video chats, voice chats, text chats, share desktops, or upload files. Um, all of these shots here, uh, the, the video you transmit from the client is configurable um, because on the receiving end, you display all of these headshots, there's no point in transmitting higher resolution video and using bandwidth because remember, every one of these gets transmitted up to the TeamTalk server and every one of them has to be transmitted back to each TeamTalk client that's actively logged into the server. So this is a good way to stress your network or test it. Um, most of these are configured as 320 by 240 a um, few 640 by 480 and maybe 10 frames per second. Uh, we use this, actually do use this periodically for stressing the network. You can tell when things aren't working well, um, one of the images will flash red or um, the ham's name will flash red on the left-hand side more accurately. Um, that's indicative of, of dropped packets. And more often than not, um, it's the, the user's access to the network. His uplink 
so to speak. Um, what do I want to say about this? Um, this Team Talk server is run on a Raspberry Pi 3, and with all seven uh, video streams running, I think the Raspberry Pi CPU utilization is about 10%, and its Ethernet utilization was about 10%. Um, very important for the server to be on a high quality network link. We have it actually sitting up on the mountaintop, sitting right on the backbone, and it works very well that way. A couple more things about this. Um, not really useful to have all those talking heads up there. It's fun once in a while. Our net is normally mostly voice chat, one person talking at a time. And one, one person talking is 30 kilobits. That's a piece of cake. You can run a voice net with many, many people participating. And down at the lower left, you can see aux channel one and two. I created those. If during a net, two people wanted to talk privately, they could double click on one of those channels and go off and talk and then go back and when they wanted to return, click on the root channel on the top. And so this TeamTalk server can support many, many simultaneous conversations on different channels. Very useful. Um, one thing that's not standardized with cameras is the RTSP URL. Uh, there are almost as many variations on URLs as there are not just camera vendors, but camera models. <coughs> Fortunately, <coughs> iSpy Connect maintains a database of them. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can find it there, search for your brand and your model, and it will even uh, create, assemble a URL for you from your selected uh, brand and model. So on um, the older cameras had somewhat simpler URLs. Here's one here, ba 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 local mesh colon five five four and the URL is eleven. You know that's pretty easy. Um, the older cameras did not require a user ID and password, but it seems like almost I haven't found any new ones that don't require a user ID and password to even view them. So you'll see something like this. You pass along the user uh, ID and the password in in the uh, URL, and they will accept that. This is something that VLC could deal with. So this is not a comprehensive list. These are just things I found that work. <coughs> VLC is pretty common. Um, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, actually Android, and I suppose iOS too, works fine. Mostly works fine, I'll talk about that. Plays records, but no PTZ control. <laughs> Joe turned me on to this one, the Happy Time ONVIF client. Um, you can see the URL there. For Windows and Android, it plays, controls, and records. Um, it's a little glitchy. Um, it does run, if you're into Linux, it does run under Wine. And I'm happy to report that it's no more glitchy under Linux than it is under Windows. Uh, if you're into Linux, command line, M player, SM player, MPV, uh, ONVIF viewer, they all work. Windows PM player works pretty well. Um, I've used that a couple of times. Um, there are lots of them out there. So here's VLC, not a big deal. Um, this is an ancient dome camera that just barely runs RTSP. It was retired and getting ready to be thrown away. And I said, I'll take that. And we put it in one of our um, radio buildings. This is SM Player on Linux, uh, works pretty well. So here's ONVIF. Happy time using ONVIF with three cameras running. Um, and down on the lower left, you can see the PTZ controls on the screen. Um, the reason I'm able to view three cameras at the same time here is because my link up to the network is a solid five gig link and the link to the other and where there is a camera, the other two cameras are other 
two other sites, hilltops around my valley, and they're connected via three gigs. So there's lots of bandwidth. As they say, your mileage may vary. This is Blue Iris. This is their viewer. Um, works very well, very easy to set up. Uh, a few more comments about Blue Iris. It's Windows only. It's not free. That one camera will cost you $34.95. The second camera will cost you another 30 bucks and anything after that is free up to 64 cameras. And what's worse, it's a license per PC. You can't pass it around. So uh, I wouldn't think uh, hams using an Arden network could find this one real useful. So network video recorders, they generally run as web services, which means they're available over the network, which is a good thing. And again, this is not a comprehensive survey. These are ones I found, managed to set up and uh, can comment on. Motion Eye and uh, Motion Eye OS. iSpy Connect makes an agent, which is an NVR and Shinobi. Things you have to worry about network video recorders. They record video. So in order to do that, they have to stream the cameras constantly. And they need to do that if you're gonna use motion detection and record. So you have to be concerned about bandwidth and CPU utilizations, especially if you're viewing multiple cameras. So the recommendation is you put the network video recorder on site with the camera, have it record there. Um, then you can view it as needed over the network. Um, pay attention to storage. Um, if you have a lot of motion on cameras that record at more than a couple frames per second and uh, more than a minimal resolution, you can run out of storage space quickly. And I uh, speak from recent experience. So cameras, um, make sure the old, some of the old junker cameras were HTTP only. Um, make sure you buy a current camera. They're getting better and better. And I will comment on that. Uh, RTSP, uh, if they've got ONVI, so much the better. And um, it's getting a little harder to find two megapixel resolution cameras. Uh, lots of fours, lots of fives. Um, the problem with a five megapixel camera, um, you won't, you'll, you'll be configuring it for something much smaller than five megapixel uh, screen content, that's for sure. Uh, additionally, they tend to be larger physically, which is more weight for your mast and more wind, uh, wind resistance. So they tend to jiggle more. So smaller cameras are better for our purposes. So I've been playing with Motion Eye OS um, for various Linuxes. Um, Motion Eye OS is um, a prepackaged app. It includes uh, a version of Linux plus the Motion uh, app plus the Motion Eye uh, web front end. Um, it's a dedicated image. Um, doesn't matter how big of an SS or micro SD card you put on, you wind up with 832 megs available for recordings. And that can get used up fast. Um, very easy installation and configuration. You burn it to the micro SD, plug it in, and it's all web, uh, web configuration from then there on. Um, you can install Motion on Raspbian and then Motion I over that and that gets you away from some of the limitations in the Motion Eye OS. Um, it's a very bare bones OS. You can SSH into it, but a lot of things are missing. <coughs> um, I got it working. Turns out there's a couple steps missing from the instructions. Um, but if you're good with Linux, you can figure it out from the logs. I won't go into it here. Um, the good thing about this is um, you can put it on a larger external drive and record more locally if you need to. Um, I expect that I will NFS mount my uh, house file server on it and save video over there. That's on my TBD list. Um, they claim a Raspberry 4 
Raspberry Pi 4 with three cameras will record 800 by 600 by four frames per second. When you're watching the UI on the Raspberry Pi 4, CPU utilization is about 50% and the load average is about 2.3. If you're not bothering it and letting it run by itself, it's much better, 30% CPU and load around 1.2. Um, I saw a note, like Arden, they really recommend the latest nightly build uh, over the production release. And um, I'm gonna upgrade mine when I can because there are a number of things that I think would be useful. So it supports pretty much, they, they have images permitting in pretty much any small single board computer that's supported on Raspbian. And there's the whole list there. Um, some of these are more powerful than um, Raspberry Pis. <coughs> they tend to use more power too, but it's nice to have uh, choices. So here's Motion Eye OS um, running on the network. And again, I can get away with it because I'm only pulling two frames per second, but that's fine for a security camera. Um, I did not try PTZ with this because all of my security cameras are fixed focus. <coughs> um, well, let me correct that. Three of the cameras here are um, PTZs, but um, nor in a normal security system, you probably wouldn't be using PTZs. I'll have to investigate that. So I liked it so much, I put it on my, uh, I set it up as my home security system. Um, works pretty well. Uh, with a moderate amount of motion, <laughs> you can fill up the Motion iOS data space in two days uh, with four cameras and only two people. So um, it takes some tuning. The motion detect does work. It's it's um, like any motion detection. Um, takes some tweaking to get it where you want. Um, the lower left camera um, I just implemented. It's a real link. I like uh, real link a lot. Um, I posted something on Facebook about it. Uh, it's very configurable. Uh, it's got a really, really good uh, user interface application. Um, very controllable. The only thing I did find wrong with it um, in watching it with VLC, it would pull up the image and then not refresh it. When I dived into VLC, um, I showed that it was losing almost all the frames, almost all the video frames. So I opened it opened a ticket with real link. And by the way, the, the, their customer support is very responsive. Um, she went off and looked at it and had me post a few things. She said, uh, that's not that latest firmware. Um, why don't you upgrade the latest firmware and try it? And I did, and VLC started working um, and recording, but it's dropping a small percentage of frames. And she came back and said, uh, change these adjustments on VLC, it doesn't do well with slow frame rates. And I'm going to try that. But for all of these uh, network video recorders, Real Link works very nicely. I'm sorry, Real Link and Motion Eye, they, they don't have any issue with it. So Shinobi is another open source soft uh, network video recorder available for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Um, very full featured, <coughs> extensive documentation. And you just walk through the cookbook uh, instructions and install it. Um, there are a number of instructions, but if you don't skip one, you're in good shape. Um, they say their Raspberry Pi 3 will support at least four cameras. Again, your mileage may vary. Here it is running those four cameras again. Um, I did get the pan tilt zoom working with it. Um, it the, the, um, <laughs> the pan tilt zoom controls in Shinobi are a bit like a wild stallion. You have to tame it. <laughs> Whoa, baby, don't pan so far. Uh, but I did get it working. <coughs> so I Spy Connect uh, agent works very, very well. Um, works on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Very well documented. Um, the only gotcha is Linux uh, requires Microsoft's dot connect to be installed. And they, they, uh, have the instructions on how to do that. It's a little glitchy, but I got it working. So here it is here. Again, the same, same cameras. Uh, all of these work very, very well. And there, 
you can see the pan tilt zoom um, shown on iSpy Connect. I didn't actually spend enough time to get it working, but I'm sure it does work. Okay, so you've got this video stream. What do you do with it? I mean, it's on a ham radio network that only hams can get to and only hams with Arden access to the network and with a viewer, that's not very useful. If you got something critical going on and you got a camera with eyes on it, how do you disseminate it? What you do is you send it to a YouTube stream. Then you disseminate it to your non-ham friends, either agencies, news outlets, uh, general public via email and social media. And this is this has worked pretty well for us. Um, like everything else, I didn't reinvent the wheel. Uh, this is the article that uh, Ben sent to me. <coughs> um, it's been around for a while. It's still there. I checked. Um, it's a fairly cookbook. In order to be successful with it, your computer has to have access to both networks, the ham network and the internet. If you've got a HAP AC light with Arden software in your shack, you're done. That's all you need to do. Um, connectivity end to end to the camera you're going to stream must be very good. And here's why. When you start streaming to YouTube, it makes a unique URL. If you lose connectivity to the camera, that stream stops. When you restart it and restream it to your, uh, YouTube, it's a different URL, which means you've got to republish that URL or just tell them to look for a certain channel. That's what I do. Um, obviously, you have to have a YouTube account already established. And FFmpeg is the main application you use to pull the video stream in, convert it to what YouTube wants, and stream it back out to the YouTube channel. It doesn't do any good to try and do this on the fly. So get them done ahead of time, verify they work, and save them in a text file. So. Here's the typical command. Uh, I had to, the, the original article was for Windows. I had to translate it a little bit to Linux, but Windows is very similar. So you can see that you really don't want to type this by hand in an emergency. So make sure you've got them assembled, tested, and stored away if and when you need to stream to YouTube. Oh, somebody wants a list of the cameras and PTZ we're using. Um, I'll address that as a question now. Um, we've standardized on Sunba. Um, we, they're, they're pretty good. Um, they're the <laughs> probably the least expensive, decent quality PTZ camera we've found. Um, they make various uh, versions. We, the low end, the two megapixel PTZ does PoE and um, RTSP real, real well. <clears throat> I like high K vision, high Kai vision, H I K I vision cameras uh, for fixed focus. We used uh, two of those and recently um, started play, playing with the real links. And if I have to put out any other fixed focus cameras, I would go with real link. Um, but there are a lot of them out there. Um, I think there was a, a couple of camera threads uh, on the Arden forum, but I don't know if they're current or not. Uh, hope that answers your questions. Any other questions? If not, oh, I see what time is it here? 1224? And stop recording.